Hi everyone, I'm Adrian, Philip, Jay, we're from Audio Excellence Canada. Today we're going to compare uh, two products that uh, uh, I think will be interesting. Uh, the Hegel H390 versus the Macintosh MA352. They're both integrated amplifiers. Sorry, hold on. Why do you have your laptop mic like that? I told you, you put it down here. If you put it there, it's going to be throaty as heck. Okay, let's start over then. How am I supposed to put it down here? I have to like clip it like this. <laughs> I don't have a flap. He doesn't Don't either. <laughs> Okay. Now, 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 <coughs> the upside down. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, Why? leave this all in. I don't care. Leave this in. Leave this in. This, this will okay. show how professional we are. All right, all right. Yeah. As I was saying, we're from Audio Excellence Canada, and today we're going to compare the Eagle H390 versus the Macintosh MA352. They're both integrated amplifiers. Um, the Hegel is 7,500 Canadian. Macintosh is 8,775 Canadian. The Hegel is uh, 250 watts into 8 ohms versus the Macintosh is uh, 200 watts into 8 ohms and 300 into 4 ohms. Now, Hegel does not state what the uh, 4 ohm uh, power rating is, so that's why I'm not mentioning it. Hegel is also a solid state uh, design, whereas the Macintosh is a hybrid. It uses tubes in the front end and solid state in the back. Um, one key um, uh, feature, the Hegel has a uh, DAC built in with streaming capability, whereas the Macintosh does not. However, the Macintosh has a moving magnet phono stage. So those are the key differences and key features. Um, who wants to start today? You want rock, paper, scissors again? Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> you go first. How do you lose after I show you my card? It's too early in the morning. All right, your turn. By the way, look at, uh, you guys, uh, when, when you're doing this video, yeah, show, show Philip's uh, classic uh, a jersey there. Max L. Yeah, yeah, very cool. All right, go ahead. What do you think? Uh, so I have a lot of interesting things to say about the, this comparison. Um, well, why don't you describe the system that we used? Um, so essentially, we set up a stack um, with both of the integrated amps in close proximity to each other so that we could just switch back and forth easily. We used uh, Lumen T2 uh, with its internal uh, DAC to drive uh, both units. Um, in other words, they're supplying it from the T2 using the DAC that's built into the T2, so, so it's the same. And then um, we are using uh, uh, Wilson Yvette's to monitor what the amps are doing. Um, the Yvette is a fantastic speaker, quite neutral, and we're gonna go into that in a little bit, bit uh, the next video. But uh, for now, just assume that that Yvette, that speaker is just great. And just to clarify, so we are only testing the amplifier and preamplifier. Only the amp, because that's yeah. what we can test, the way they sound. So it should sound this way with anything you plug into it. Um, and they're quite different. Uh, both extremely enjoyable, um, but the presentation is night and day different. Um, so let me start off with the H390, which I love. I really love this product. I was blown away by it. I mean, I, you were blown away by it. I was blown away by it. For and a cube lover, that's a... It is. It, I actually find it... Um, quite a bit kind of tuby in a really, really nice way. In other words, it's not noisy, but it has that kind of beautiful mid-range and then kind of open, extended, high frequencies like um, a good tube setup, uh, a modern tube setup. In some ways, it sounds a, a bit like uh, the, the new Macintosh tube preamps. Uh, the C27 comes to mind. Uh, it's very similar. In, in its presentation and the, the active decision they made and how to voice it. Um, so this Hegel represents kind of like uh, a distillation of technologies and in, in, in the package they put together for their top of the line H590, uh, but in a slightly warmer presentation. Like we're just talking about a little bit, but it makes a difference. Um, so what's amazing about this Hegel and um, is its ability to kind of pick out everything that when you're listening to it, um, the background's very black. And 
when you when it presents music to you it's not so much that it images superbly and it does image well but every little piece every little sound that you hear in it so there's an instrument playing here and you know there's an instrument playing here and it can also do instruments playing here and here in other words it layers it front to back left to right center outwards um, so you can pick out every little tiny thing in a way that you've never heard before not at least in an amplifier of this price range um, i really dislike saying you know it's really you know good value for them for the money but it's actually just really good value because it actually does all these things that you expect from something um, that would be much more difficult to afford um, and so would you go beyond this point Mm, well, you know, if you're crazy like we are, yeah, probably. But for most people, uh, it's more than enough. Um, so when I was listening to, <laughs> uh, so I don't normally choose, uh, you know, songs or music that is obscure. And uh, so I, I ch I ch I'm going to use one song to highlight what the Hegel does that and it, where it does it really well, which is... Uh, on title, there's um, uh, a version of uh, Al Stewart's Year of the Cat, which a song I really love. Uh, we have it here on vinyl too, so it's very easy to compare it back and forth. But on that song, it comes in and the music is all only on the left channel and the right channel is totally quiet. And that's the way that song starts. A lot of people, when they hear it, um, they think that the stereo system is broken because there's nothing coming out of the right channel. And then what happens with the Hago is that as the music comes in, bits, instrumentation comes in and it spotlights all across left to right, front to back in all these different positions. And with the Hago, you can really clearly hear it. And But it also sounds at the same time that the space around all the various instruments is the same. In other words, it might have been recorded in the same room with the same acoustic signature in terms of uh, that sound stage. And um, so the, the Hegel can really do that well against a black background, obviously. So um, it has this kind of natural flow and it's, uh, the, the sound stage is actually kind of recessed. So it draws you in. So as a collective kind of thing, the Hegel does a superb job. And everything from top to bottom is very well controlled in a way that is natural, but at the same time focused. Um, you would swear that they were in the room. Uh, you know, that's really what I heard. In comparison, the MA352, which Jay and I have already previously spoken about and we love because of the big boogie factor in, in, in the bottom end and the, the kind of fun factor as well. Um, it does suffer a little bit in comparison. I don't really like to do A-B comparisons in, in that respect because invariably they're not the same. So you'll choose one over the other, which is not a great thing to do because I actually love the MA352 as well, but it is quite different. Um, I don't think it's aimed at the same kind of uh, audio lover. Uh, the 352 seems to have a slight, in comparison, an exaggeration, especially in the bottom end, to give it a bit more bloom, a little bit more mid-bass energy, and um, it doesn't really, it doesn't try to do some of the things that the Hegel tries to do. And in, in, as a result, when you're listening in an audiophile mode, it, it kind of suffers. Um, it's not really any less, but it just is, doesn't try to do the little, all the little imaging stuff. Uh, the soundstage is, uh, is shallower and it's more forward. So it kind of grabs you a bit better than the Hegel does. The Hegel tries to draw you in. The Macintosh MA352 tries to you know, present itself to you in a way that says, hi, how you doing? And um, which is quite different from the MA8900, which uh, I think you quite liked a bit better than the 352. Um, so I think Macintosh made a deliberate choice to try and give it, to give this amp uh, um, something that is more accessible. It's easy to listen to it because it tells you exactly what it's gonna do. And it does it in a way where 
you know, um, the, it's warm and inviting and um, um, it has that kind of easiness that you associate with tubes, uh, although it's in some ways not quite a classically like modern tube. It more, uh, I think I said in, in the other evaluation of it, to me it sounds a bit more like old school uh, uh, tube receivers. I particularly refer back to the Fisher. It has the same kind of, you know, but it's the same presentation for all music. So the, it doesn't matter what you play, it always adds this kind of like, uh, um, uh, what's a good way of describing it? I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> you don't know. You know what I'm thinking. We sat there the other day to talk about euphonic. It. it is a euphonic kind of thing. That's a good word. I mean, uh, so I this hate, is not organic. It, no, it's not. It's, <laughs> it has nothing to do with that um, because you know we're talking about glass and metal, and uh, there are transformers in it, and there's a big steel chassis. So your so choice. That's not, what, what did you ultimately? My choice ultimately is the Hegel 390 because it does more of the things that I'm interested in hearing or the way I want to hear music now. But as I was telling Jay the other day, 10 years ago, I would have loved to have the 352 because at that stage, that is the kind, those are the kinds of values I would have highly appreciated. Um, being in the store the last three years has kind of changed my perception of things. Listening to Wilson speakers, on a daily basis. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I, I am a little bit more of it. I appreciate those values. Yeah. And I think you're an influence too, in a really good way. So, you know, but I enjoy both. Both are really, really, really excellent. Um, it's just, you know, they're just quite different. And if you're looking for something casual, then the, yeah, the 352 will always entertain you the entire day. You'll find it fun. And if you want to dive more deeply into music, and listen intently all by yourself in some darkened room, then the 390 is an excellent choice. Okay. Jay? Uh, so, uh, um, by the way, gonna... everybody say happy birthday, Jay. Hey. Okay. How old are you now? 17? 16? 16? 15? 5? 5? 25. Are you uh, legal yet? Oh my God. All right, go um, ahead. So, uh, I mean, this is going to be a boring video because I pretty much agree with Philip uh, in most stuff. Um, I find the Hegel... I pay him money to say this, by the way. Yes, uh, he paid me t uh, 10 cents. Um, the Hegel H390 um, seemed a little bit more tubey to me, uh, even though it's a solid state, um, than in the MA352. Um, especially when I was listening to vocals like one of your favorites, Hey Laura by yep. Gregory Porter. Um, Hurt by Johnny Cash, one of your favorites, Adrian. Um, uh, Cry Me a River by Ella. All these tracks are very emotional tracks uh, for me. And when I was listening to these vocal tracks that are a little bit more emotional, engaging, um, I found the Hegel to be a little bit more um, emotional. And it's really hard for me to listen with emotion these days, quite frankly, because I hear so much stuff. There's very little that can give me a chill down my spine. And Hegel 390 with the, uh, the Wilson Audio events certainly did it for me. I mean, um, I, was, I was fully engaged. I was listening to it. Um, in fact, I was listening to Midday, and we had a client come in. I didn't hear him. And so, um, <laughs> um, so it, it, overall, um, I have to say I prefer the 390, um, just like you, Philip. But one thing is that, the, I, fi I find that that the bump, um, not a bump, but I don't know, I don't know like exactly how to say it, a lift, if you so will. So the there's midday, there's like a presence, presence and there's a presence, there's like a, like a bloom yeah. um, at around, uh, Jay thinks about 100 hertz. 100. Uh, so one of the things about the 352 is it has an equalizer. Yeah, which, which we'll, we'll talk about, but uh, yeah. yeah. So, so you can actually yeah. do yeah. some fine tuning. Yeah, so it has that little bloom there and that really bothers me. Like in the beginning, I'm like, yeah, it's, this is fun. You know, it's, it, can, it can work with a speaker. Don't get me wrong. If you have a speaker that does no mid bass or bass uh, in that region, then the MA352 will certainly do it uh, a really good justice. But um, I really did not like it with the Yvette's uh, in that regard because it had this, uh, to me, a, a natural bloom. And it almost sounded like um, I was, you know, 
contemplating if I should say this yesterday uh, with Philip, but uh, it sounds like like flappy, like a, like, oh, a, oh, like a a little bit like out, a out of control. Yeah. Like, a, like a subwoofer on, on certain tracks. Um, you know, for example, "Limit Your Love" by you know James Blake, one of the standard test tracks. It sounds a little bit like this, like a subwoofer that hasn't been adjusted properly. Like you've adjusted it and then you turned it up. Exactly, and so you, you can, can actually hear, hear the subwoofer, yeah. and uh, the integration there is not so good. So I, I suspect few reasons, and it's all suspicions here. And there's no measurements. It's just my subjective opinion. So take it with a grain of salt. My my suspicion is that because a lot of speakers, um, including the Wilson Audio, um, uh, does slightly em emphasize the mid bass because that energy is there to give that punch and impact for most speakers. Um, I've seen very, I, I've, I've seen few, but I've seen very few little speakers that actually has like a linear um, uh, bass response in, 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 instead of having that little bit of emphasis. So with that emphasis added in the, in the speaker design and then with the MA352 adding to that factor, it just becomes a little bit too much in my opinion. So the good thing is that the equal equalizer um, um, is there for the MA352. Yeah, there's a five band equalizer yeah, in that. Yeah, there's a five band equalizer and there's the 125 uh, hertz one. And when I turned that down, I said this in my previous uh, video and Villa found it <laughs> this time around as well. Uh, when you turn that down, uh, it does take away that uh, mid bass energy um, and it does fine tune it. And it's a, it's a night and day difference really. Um, I found it this time around as well, just it's a lot more, uh, how do I say it, to my liking. This, this is basically how I say, I'll say it. It gets a lot closer to the Hegel, in my opinion, once you do that. Um, now, with this being said, when you engage the equalizer, the overall um, sound stage and depth decreases. Yes, so it's, for it's, sure. It's, like I said in the previous video, like the resolution seems to kind of like to this. Um, so that's what I found. So um, yeah, I, I mean, to me, the MA352 MA is like a love and hate relationship at this point. Um, while the Hegel is like a no-brainer for me, um, I really like the H190 and 390 is just like a steroid version of that. Uh, I will say this though, for speakers, like if you have a closed box speaker, which there aren't that many of them around, mm -hmm. I think the 352 might be a better choice because yeah, certainly. Um, that, that, that presence can be exaggerated in a speaker that has very good mm -hmm. bass, re bass reflex design, which the Yvette is. Now, when you first hear uh, both of these uh, integrated amplifiers, what, what you're gonna find is that, um, in my belief, you, the MA352 definitely has a wow factor. Yep. So you're gonna be like, oh my God, that's so much bass. It's a hybrid. Oh my God, it has so much bass. And and uh, when you, it's it's only later when you realize that you've heard enough uh, components and then uh, compare the uh, difference between the two that the actually the 390 actually has a in a way more realistic and more uh, grippy bottom end compared to the ME352. Um, so that's just what I'll put. So I will say this though. Um, I usually listen to a certain volume. I, I think that all systems have a certain volume. And the nice thing about the 352, uh, which I have not heard from almost any other amplifier, um, when you turn it down, because there's that presence or that lift in the 100 hertz region, um, it's like a loudness control, a natural loudness control. And uh, when you have it at a lower volume, the music has more body and presence. And that's really, really, really nice. Where oh, also like tracks that are recorded a little bit lean. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, when you play the ME352, it adds that little bit of bloom, so... And body. Yeah, and so on tracks that I just avoided because I was just recorded too lean, I, I found the ME352 to be a little bit... A like little a bit. lot of 80s tracks, which yeah. can be a bit bright, in com you know, that, that has a, a tilt that's a bit hard, the 352 does a really good job of filling it out and making it more natural sounding. Um, so, uh, I'm going to generally disagree with the guys, but I understand why. Um, of one of the is. earlier videos, I mentioned that um, as as human beings, our 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 we evolve with what we like and, and dislike, and the taste that we like over time will change. Um, so for me, uh, I, I made notes with uh, with the Hegel. It it impressed me as one of the finest solid state amps I've ever heard. Um, uh, all the things that the guys have mentioned. Very dark background, superb detail, effortless, uh, wonderful grip in the bass. All of these things are absolutely true. 
Um, I just didn't find it to emotionally involve me very much, which is kind of weird because, um, and, and again, only in comparison with the Macintosh. Um, uh, I think w- when I listened to it, I really enjoyed it. Then when I switched over to the Macintosh, um, it just involved me so much more. And just so that we we are, are, uh, leave the base issue aside for a moment, I uh, in my testing, I always start with simple things. So voices first, as the guys will tell you, my playlist. Um, and so there wasn't any uh, uh, base in the recordings that I start with first. And I just found that the Macintosh drew me in more. I, I, I just commu- I just connected with the with the music more uh, uh, with the Macintosh. And then certainly when I started listening to larger tracks, uh, uh, more complex tracks, um, whether or not there's a bass lift, it definitely has that nice ripe bass, but still with fairly good grip. Not as uh, grippy as, as the Hegel for sure, but um, also not round and slow like, say, some of the early tube amps that we've all uh, played with. Um, and, and I made a lot of notes. Unfortunately, we, because we're running short of time, I, I'll just put them in the description box later and you guys can check it out if you're interested. Um, uh, um, where the Hegel highlighted detail for me very well, the detail with the Macintosh was there without being highlighted, so uh, without being spotlit, I should say. So uh, uh, in, in a per- previous email, I mentioned how uh, with, with the Hegel, um, imagine if you were on a stage and you had spotlights, and, and this way you could hear individual uh, instruments and or performers. With the Macintosh, I just found like the lights were all turned on, so I could uh, uh, see and hear everything, but without anything being spotlit. So it was just more uh, relaxed and more continuous for me. Um, uh, I men- um, uh, both Philip and, and Jay mentioned about how um, the Macintosh seems to bring the music more forward into uh, to you. I, I I call that, or at least I I, I want to say it's it's intimate, especially if you play smaller uh, um, uh, ensembles, um, single vocals, and so on. It just sounds like it's right there in the room, and those are the times where it's magical for me um, when I played Keb Mo every morning. I, I mean, Keb Mo was right there in the room for me. I, I just was blown away by how I was able to just almost visually see and hear him. Um, uh, uh, another cut that, that uh, I, I listened to, Uncle Cracker, Drift Away. Really enjoyable, uh, very engaging. And then I thought, no, that can't be right. I immediately switched over to the Hegel and that magic for me was lost. It was just like uh, uh, um, the performers were now four, three or four feet further back and it just wasn't part of that uh, uh, performance anymore. Uh, now, of course, the uh, other side is also true. If if you uh, want to hear, or if your system, for example, is very forward sounding, let's say you have horn speakers that are very forward and very present, maybe the Macintosh might be a little bit too much. And that's something, again, only you can tell you'll have to test it for yourself uh, and then one last thing um, the as a test uh, every every one of us connected the um, lumen using the analog outputs um, I figured well let me just see if the Hegel would sound better if I connected the digital uh, the DAC inside the uh, Hegel so I took the digital output from the um, uh, a lumen. I figured out how to do that. <laughs> the Luddite that I am. I figured out how to do that. I connected it to the digital input of the Hegel, and it definitely made it better. It was it was uh, uh, more involving for me. Uh, it lifted a bit of a veil that I thought was already there um, um, away so that I could uh, enjoy it more. But ultimately, in terms of that involvement factor, I felt that the Macintosh was better for me. Uh, so for me, the Macintosh uh, um, uh, was the winner of this, whereas the other two guys preferred the uh, the Hegel. But that's good. Um, as always, your mileage may vary, and that's why we do these videos. So there's no right and wrong. Uh, you 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 listen for yourself and see what you think. Uh, as always, uh, so any can any, I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. So for me, yeah. I was actually way more involved emotionally with the Hegel and. I'm and that's sitting, because, as I was joking, you're becoming an audiophile. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is a non. This is a non-voluntary reaction. I'm sitting there and playing music, and it like every track, it was doing exactly the same thing to me. Yeah. And I could feel like a kind of slight anxiety, kind of an excitement that was going on, and I could feel the hair in the back of my neck 
reacting and it was tingling and the Macintosh never did that for me Show but the Hegel spine. yes there's a chill down here. Yeah. and it was like it didn't matter what track I was playing that's what the Hegel was doing to me yeah. and I so the, to me that's how I was connecting to it yeah. and but you for me it was the opposite yeah it's interesting and, and I did it um, multiple times just to see if in fact there were any biases that were uh, latent that were coming up but it wasn't uh, um, uh, for me for me um, in fact I wrote down I wrote this down for me desert island choice is Macintosh and and that was the criteria for me I started to think uh, over time um, what would be a what, what would I willingly take to a desert island what would I and for me the Macintosh was the choice anyway Jerry's waving his hand which tells us we got to go so um, I'm Adrian Philip Jay uh, thanks for watching this if you like it please subscribe uh, turn on not notification and if you have any questions or comments please uh, 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 enter them at the bottom of the video um, and uh, we'll see you again next time thanks very much bye bye